money is a job, even for politicians, it's even doubly hard because the time that we have to spend even with our constituents, sometimes we have to take our children along. I'm also aware of the very long hours and the emotional strain of my own staff within our children's agencies that go into making sure that not only are our children and babies protected, but what happens to him when a child and a baby is abandoned. And I want to say thank you to them all sincerely for the work that they do. I'm asking all Jamaicans to get involved. And if you want to get involved, you can call 1-888-PROTECT. And you can volunteer and you can get involved with the work that we're doing. Mr. Speaker, the exceptional love that we show our children must become a well-known part of our rich culture. Mr. Speaker, Jamaica is a cultural superpower. When the leader of the free world comes to our shores and in less than 24 hours, he decides to leave his hotel room and go and visit the Bob Marley Museum, you realize the kind of impact that we've had on the world in terms of culture. Mr. Speaker, we know that we're special, but we're happy to see that the rest of the world knows that we're yeah, special yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. So we must work to protect our culture in all its forms, physically and artistically. Our cultural heritage, art and music are the, heri are the envy of many countries around the world. I want to share with you not only the achievements that we've made last year, but some of the things that we're working on for this financial year. Mr. Speaker, we've ensured that the cultural and religious beliefs of Rastafari were respected in the new Ganja legislation that was tabled in this House. With the assistance of UNESCO, we have created a data bank of the intangible cultural heritage of many communities island-wide, how they make baskets, how they crochet, how they produce sugar sweetie, and all of this can now be viewed as a part of the data bank at the ACIJ at the Institute of Jamaica. And this data bank is going to be updated throughout the year on an ongoing basis so that we don't lose the memory of some of the oral traditions and other traditions of our, of our ancestors and the older generation in our country. We'll also be producing a cultural passport for thousands of students at the secondary level, and this will allow students to not only visit sites and events free of cost, but also at a reduced rate. This is a build-on of the 2013 Culture Card program that we introduced, and we'll be introducing this cultural passport where they can get stamps and seals through the JCDC Culture Club program, and this will be put in schools for the academic year 2015-2016. Mr. Speaker, we facilitated the tabling of the first report of the National Reparations Committee, which was debated in this House, and consultations have been completed in Kingston and will be held in Montego Bay and other areas island-wide. The topic for the annual Norman Manley Lecture this year was reparations, and a presentation on reparations was made at the Sankofa International Conference in February, which viewed via satellites by universities in the United Kingdom as well as York University in New York, and presentations by a number of the commission members have continued at various service clubs around the island. The national high school debate with reparations will also be done as, as a theme going forward, Mr. Speaker. I want to congratulate the JCDC as well, because their programs resulted in a 20% increase in the entries in the performing arts last year, as well as a 30% increase in entries for visual arts last year, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this year's National Festival on Emancipation Independence is expanded and it is enhanced to include the commemoration of the 150th anniversary of the Morant Bay Rebellion, a very special rebellion in our history led by our national hero, one of our national heroes, Paul Bogle. I will tell you more about this when we launch it, but just to tell you right now that the theme is Proud and Free, Jamaica 53 and you'll hear about, more about this when we launch it later on this year. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to tell you that we have added another three museums to the four that we implemented last year, and the ones that will be added this year, there yeah, you can clap, are the Simon Bolivar Center, the National Museum West, and the, National History, the Natural History Museum. What was once called the Museum of St. James is now the National Museum West. Housed in the historic Montego Bay Courthouse, now the Montego Bay Cultural Center in St. James, this museum chronicles the history of the parish of St. James 
and how it became known as a stronghold of King Sugar and plantation slavery. The museum also documents the 1831 Christmas Rebellion, which led to the abolition of slavery in the British West Indies, and it details the ascent of Montego Bay as a tourism capital of Jamaica. Also housed in this Montego Bay Cultural Center is a new addition to the National Gallery of Jamaica, the National Gallery West. Like the National Gallery of Jamaica, the National Gallery West will showcase the works of established and upcoming artists. It is expected to mount four major exhibitions per year, with one specifically curated for the National Gallery West. The other exhibitions will be condensed versions of the exhibitions mounted at the Kingston branch. So Mr. Speaker, we're also taking our history and our culture to make sure that the people on the western side of the island and our tourists understand yeah. who we are culturally as a people. This one is particularly pleasing to me because it will guarantee our people an understanding of where we're coming from in terms of our flora and our fauna, particularly for students, both overseas and locally, and those Jamaicans who really want to appreciate some of our endemic species. I am pleased to announce that the government of Jamaica is partnering with the Japanese government to enhance the technological capacity of the Institute of Jamaica. Here, here. This is our largest cultural agency, Mr. Speaker, and the IOJ certainly, and the Ministry of Youth and Culture will be building a class technology driven natural history exhibition gallery at the National History Museum, which will showcase Jamaican plants, animals, as they would be seen in their natural habitat. So in the same way that you can go to museums internationally and see the stuffed animals, etc., children will now be able to come in a very advanced setting to see the animals, the flora and fauna that are endemic to our country right down there. In addition to that, the Japanese working with us will be upgrading the junior centers at the IOJ and will also be enhancing the lecture hall, which has been the historic place for the Musgrave Medal and other lectures. So the IOJ is really getting a boost. And we wanted to make sure that that happened because too often we forget about the Institute of Jamaica. So between the government of Japan, which is giving us about 480,000 US dollars, and our own government with 42, 46 million um, Jamaican dollars in terms of our capital budget, that museum, that natural history museum of Jamaica will be built this year. Mr. Speaker, the, the Jamaica National Heritage Trust continues to work with other agencies for the protection and revitalization of our heritage sites. We're currently working with the UDC and TEF to restore several areas. And in terms of streamlining the development of Port Royal, over the last 12 months, we've been assisting with the revitalization of that town. The member from East Kingston knows about that. And currently, we are restoring or helping with the restoration of the Naval Hospital. We have completed the Admiralty House and the H Block, both of which are being used as classroom spaces for the Caribbean Maritime Institute. We are, because the Caribbean Maritime Institute is growing so rapidly and doing so well, we have to find other classrooms for them and we're being housed in this particular place. We're also working to resolve the issue of the relocation of the persons who occupy the home of the national hero, the right excellent Marcus Garvey. We've now made the submission for the relocation because we have the money for the refurbishing. So we aim to start refurbishing and restoration of the property by the anniversary of his next birthday. And we're committed to preserving that part of the legacy of this outstanding Jamaican. No, we met, we met, with, we met with the member of parliament for Northeast St. Anne. Mr. Speaker, I waited on this one for last because over the past two years, I think I announced some time ago that we worked very hard to actually get a seat on the prestigious World Heritage Committee. We're the only small island developing state in the world to sit on it, one of 21 countries. And what it means is that it will give us the opportunity to vote for other World Heritage Sites, which is not an easy feat. Jamaica doesn't have one. Cuba has several, Barbados has 
has a couple. And with the kind of culture that we have, we didn't have any. So we lobbied. The, a lot of work went into it, but it didn't work under you. That, that is what happened. The, the other issue, what we did, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we regrouped and we put a solid team in place. And we did the technical work that was what was important. And we put the proper dossier in place. We submitted that dossier to UNESCO. The evaluator said it passed the technical yes. evaluation. So they sent the evaluators to Jamaica. Yes. When they sent the evaluators yes. to Jamaica, yes. they came to Jamaica. Yes. When they came and they went back, I am pleased to report yes. that ICOMOS and ICN has said that the Blue and Jonquil Mountains, they are recommended it for inscription to be on the World Heritage yes. List. What is going to be happening? And so when we go, when we go in June to Germany, we will make sure that we get it voted. Because guess what? It is an excellent thing to have the Blue and Jonquil Mountains as a World Heritage Site. And what is good about it is that it is not only, it is going to be a mixed site for the natural heritage and habitats and also a cultural site. And it will really be the first mixed site if we get it in the Caribbean. So kudos to everybody who has worked in this process. It has not been easy. And so on that side, also, I am sure, I am sure Mr. Speaker, okay, there you are. I am sure Mr. Speaker that my colleagues on both sides of this house are aware that the record numbers that we have in terms of tourism are not only due, Mr. Speaker, to our great hotels and the work of our Minister of yes, Tourism and Entertainment, yes, but it really is because of our people and our culture, and we must really stop to pay homage. A lot of times we cuss and complain about the country that we live in, but the truth is we live in a place that other people want to vacation, and we live in one of the coolest places in the world. Mr. Speaker, the world has changed so much in the last 20 years. There was a time when former Michael Manley called for a new economic order. He wanted more value added to be created in one's own country, and he recognized that the economic structure as it existed would really require increased amounts of raw bauxite to purchase the tractor to excavate it. In other words, we'd always be shipping out more of our resources to buy the finished goods of other countries. He was right. We needed to create a more value-added base as a country. The world as it existed then was designed to benefit the developed countries who were exporting manufactured goods to the same countries from which they were exploiting the raw materials. I wish to outline for you, Mr. Speaker, the world as it exists today. Today, we will produce about 3.5 zettabytes of information. That's more information than the world has seen in the past 5,000 years. Mr. Speaker, recent tests have been carried out on third generation fiber optics, suggesting that one single strand of fiber optic can carry 10 trillion bits of information. That's a lot of information. Mr. Speaker, you remember those guys that used to walk around to your house and carry boxes of encyclopedias mm -hmm. to sell you? He no longer exists because Google has taken over. Oh, yeah. Every month, there's 100 billion searches on Google. And that is what a lot of young people are using. In addition to that, and the member from North Catherine, North, um, from St. Catherine might want to hear this, 10 years ago before Facebook was created, today there are 1.3 billion people on Facebook. That's bigger than, that's about the same size as China, Chairman. So there's nothing minor about that population in the world. Mr. Speaker, where, where, we're living in a data-driven world where technology has changed everything and even the way the world has worked. So much so that the technical information is doubling every two years. And so what has happened, Mr. Speaker, is that the in-demand jobs today did not exist 10 years ago. Mr. Speaker, in addition to that, there are four different generations of people working together. 
there is certainly persons like persons sitting to my different spaces.